the Mini Pro Dyno, primarily used for testing motors to find their performance and uh, compare and to set them up. But I've already shown that you can also use it for testing LiPos and now more importantly with the latest uh, software upgrade it's possible to test speed controls. Now, people often ask which speed controls fastest. Also the brakes. Um, some speedos appear to have poor brakes, some have better brakes and people often wonder uh, how to get the best brakes. There are also very many speedos of different current ratings. Will the best one accelerate quicker than others? And in blinky racing, particularly 17.5-13.5 is zero time speedos. Which one gives the highest RPM is the one can one give you a faster motor than another well luckily uh, with the latest software all this can be tested you've got various graphs that show you uh, and various uh, parameters can be looked at voltage current RPM and you can plot all these on a graph here I've selected RPM voltage and current versus time. So what uh, characteristics of the speed controls are we looking for? Well for acceleration uh, you want to see which one can deliver the most amps and accelerate the car to the highest RPM in the quickest time. So we want to show the current against time and the RPM. What about um, brakes? Well, again, when you hit full brakes, you want to see which one can brake from the maximum RPM we have, how long it takes to get down to zero RPM, and all this can be done on the graph. Now, with this latest program, you can set the throttle for acceleration and then the negative throttle for brakes, and you can set the amount of time you spend at each, t at each point. Now, for acceleration, you want to hold it for about say six seconds because the RPM will stabilize it will get up pretty fast stabilize and then you want to hit full brakes here I've just said it a quarter brakes and you hold it for about five seconds should be long enough to break this flywheel from maximum uh, revs down to minimum and all this can be recorded on here it's um, only possible to do all these tests really in comparison with the speedos set in zero boost or blinky uh, so that um, no other factors like turbo boost or throttle uh, and torque limiting come into play so you will take a speedo you set it in blinky mode you will set the brakes on 100 percent torque 100 percent that will give you a, a good comparison now some speedos have also other settings for brake like frequency and uh, possibly uh, other adjustments, uh, frequency for forward speed as well. All those can be tested. So here we have a big pile of speedos and one of these will need to be uh, the base one. I normally use uh, this Hobbywing 3.1 for testing motors it's a good uh, high power uh, speedo, it's reliable, uh, gives consistent results. Lots of speedos here, McLaren, uh, Sanwa. Um, you've got also, you can have a look at the cheaper speedos, the lower cost ones, see how they perform. They'll just stop. There's an, a previous model of Tekin, and you can also test the latest Tekin. Uh, you've got the Powerful XR10 Hobby Wings, R1s, Much Mores, Dash, Nosram or LRP, same company, now they're back in working. Now you remember, you have to set all these up into blinky mode, zero timing. Uh, some will need um, program boxes, some can be done on the buttons. So a BB, it's a bit tedious, but you've got to make sure everything is set. As I said, the brakes 100% and then uh, you know what you're testing. So another few things to point out, 
got to have a very very good battery and you don't want anything to vary the performance except the speedo itself so the motor is the same one all the time uh, it, this one is tuned to um, 6 amps uh, with no load at all I leave it at that all the time it's a 13.5 turn connected to the dyno obviously uh, I've got a temperature probe here looking at the motor you don't want anything to overheat if you change them from one speeder to another everything the temperature wants to be near ambient because if you get these things really hot it changes their performance um, you've got uh, the sensible for connecting uh, checking voltage and amps and then you need a lipo which doesn't vary in voltage because obviously if you've got a lipo that's half charged you're going to get a completely wrong readings on current delivery etc so I'm keeping this very powerful uh, large capacity uh, high power C rated battery and I keep it at full charge at all times with these two wires to this speed, keeping it uh, charged all the time I'm checking I'll keep it at 8.4 volts so that nothing the battery won't change the results or affect them at all motor stays constant now some of the connectors the the speedos will have to be connected to to this board um, normally a speedo will have connectors if it doesn't I'll have to put some on uh, to make a very good contact the motor these crocodile clips with wires directly to the front are normally good enough for connections if they prove a problem they haven't up to now I can always solder directly to the motor but that is um, a bit tedious remember to put the sensor cable in and that is the I could do it manually but you can't uh, repeat the results manually so you're going to have to let the computer do it over here on the computer this is just a test run now it starts to throttle up at 10% uh, this is just to stop the massive current surge if you hit it from zero uh, it really slams the belt as well and uh, it doesn't give you a very good uh, view of the current will be limited by other things besides the speedo the wire in the battery everything else so take it to 10 percent and then head it at 100 percent just for a fraction of a second uh, without logging any info because that that current pulse there is huge and it put, will push the graph just too high just a fraction then we hold it uh, full throttle for six seconds log in all the data then in this test I'm going to show you I just hit quarter breaks for holding it for five seconds and then it turns off and uh, we'll uh, just log the end of the run and then a stop and stop logging so I'll just show you how that works you have to connect the dyno it's pretty warm in here today, it's 28 degrees uh, ambient. Um, I'm going to connect the throttle, which is now connected to the speedo. And I'm going to turn the speedo on. Um, this one has a button to turn it on. And it's in blinky mode and calibrated uh, to, the, to the computer. So it go to 100% one way and 100% breaks the other way. It is something you, when I test all these others, I'm going to have to set each one up to the com up to the computer for maximum minimum. Bit tedious. Uh, you'll be able to see the the graphs uh, forming here when I start it. So here we go. Start sequence one. It says you ready? Yes. And it's going to stop there. So what it did was it accelerated to maximum RPM and then hit the brakes, which took all that time to go from there. Time here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 seconds to there. So th uh, that is the, the blue one is the RPM. 
this uh, is the current see as it accelerates starts up uh, current 100 amps it was there it slows down and when it hits the brakes the current drops like that uh, the voltage obviously uh, when you hit full current the voltage falls it slowly rises a bit when you hit the full brakes there's a little jump there which can show you that you can expand this graph and uh, that point there it's just over just over that four second point where you hit the brakes and if you go down here there look the voltage just goes up where it hits the brakes as it stops drawing the current and there's the current drops away to virtually zero I can uh, you can work out the curve if you look down this end you see when it got to there the braking effect dies it breaks virtually linear so just there and then the brakes die away so you'll probably find the car will brake to, to almost a stop and then the brakes fade and it's shown up there I can I can uh, save at that data, and uh, or I can leave it on the screen and do another test a sequence too, either with the same uh, speedo if I adjusted say the brake frequency or some other setting and see what difference it makes I get a different curve, and uh, or I can put another speedo in and do the test with exactly the same uh, parameters and compare the graphs how they look so that is a, a basic um, how I do it and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you some tests I'll be doing either one speedo and showing you as I said the different effects of programming the brakes frequencies or if there are there any other things you can change or comparing them to another speedo uh, whichever and seeing how they compare. Testing the Hobbywing XR10 Just Stock, which is a fairly cheap uh, speed control compared to others, but it works very well with 17.5s, 35 turn motors in uh, blinky mode. And uh, I've connected it up, uh, set the neutral. Um, this one has an on off switch, so I've plugged it in, fully charged battery. We can turn it on. And then uh, we've connected the dyno and the throttle. So I um, called it the Hobbywing XR10 Just Stock Test. We can start the sequence and we just go. And it's logged all the data for us. What we can do now is import to test run two. I've got um, the three one three one I've tested earlier. Test base. Click on that and open that, and it's put it up for us. Now we can look at a couple of different things. Uh, the voltage has remained constant, the two lines are overlay, overlaid, so we can take the voltage off just out of the way for now. Let's look at the revs. The uh, just stock is the blue one. It was a bit uh, slightly offset, but that's just the program. Well, they, they seem to accelerate almost identically. Top speed the uh, the 3.1 just fraction your head hit the brakes they both break in the same down to this point here which is 8,000 about 9,000 rpm and then you can see that the blue one which is the just stock uh, the brakes just have gone away and the this one is still holding good brakes right down to here 2000 rpm where it fades so that shows you that the performance of the just stock 
acceleration, top speed, and brakes down to here are very good, but yeah, the brakes below 9000 RPM is not good at all. By the way, you've got a data grid here which you can compare things to more accurately if you want to. You can look at uh, the revs, for instance. We want to look at the maximum revs. It happened about six seconds. So you can scroll down here to around about uh, six seconds and look along at the revs. And it says... RPM when we get to it, right down the end here. Maximum revs there for the uh, the X just stop one we're looking at 24,000, 24, 24,248, and the hobby wing one with a six second mark as well. About there. 24,000. 500 so a few 250 rpm or nothing much in it so you can there's lots of things you can look at the kv and everything for motors along there current draw uh efficiency not applying to at the moment to this so you can uh, hide the data grid look at the graph acceleration as you can see that the 3.1 it's slightly offset so and the other one are, are virtually identical it's just the brakes that they varied so that's um, a typical test that you can do that uh, I chose this one to exaggerate any differences on the brakes um, when I look at some of the more powerful uh, speedos uh, there'll be more adjustments perhaps on the brake frequency and that and it'd be interesting to see if it's anything uh, meaningful uh, comes up. I can save these results as I said and bring them up. You can have up to three different speedo results on the screen at any one time.